Hey, what's up everybody? So today I want to talk a little bit about why I chose to buy the Nikon Z6 II. Now everybody's use case is a little bit different and uh, first I wanted to just kind of go over a couple of the pros that really drew me to it versus other cameras that I compared it against and then we'll come back to my use case a little bit afterwards. Now I'm primarily a still shooter but I do a little bit of video mostly for this YouTube stuff and everything and um, I did like the uh, focus peaking uh, for video as well as decent autofocus for video. That was one of the things that really brought me to uh, consider the mirrorless versus the DSLR. Um, you could add into that the uh, exposure peaking as well or zebras as some people refer to that. Um, all those are really good features for video. So one really big benefit I wanted to mention was that Nikon designed this camera with a very short uh, sensor to flange for the lens mount distance. And what that means is that you can effectively uh, add a spacer or an adapter to use pretty much any lens uh, on this camera. This increases your opportunities to mount and adapt different lenses and gives you a lot of options uh, for different lenses on this camera. For me, that's going to be a great benefit and uh, that's one thing that made me really consider this camera. One spec that really drew me to the Z6 II was the uh, uh, 120 frames per second for video in 1080. This allows you to do some cool slow motion stuff if you get into an artsy project or something that you really want to do. Uh, that could be really cool for some things and it's a area I'd like to experiment with a little bit more in the future. Now one feature that is very interesting for still shooters is the uh, in-body image stabilization and uh, that helps me a lot because I do have some older uh, lenses and such that could benefit from that um, as well as the option to shoot silently. Um, now of course uh, there's a little bit of a caveat with that. It's that, you know, if you have a uh, moving subject, it may cause issues in your frame. Uh, so, you know, those are usually the times you're going to use a silent shutter anyway. Uh, you know, most of the time doing a landscape or a, uh, let's say a still life or something artsy like that, you, you know, it won't matter if the uh, shutter was silent or not. So, uh, depending on your use case, you might find a benefit in that. So I do like the uh, option to charge via USB. Of course, everybody talks about that. That's pretty cool. Um, so that's very helpful. You can uh, charge with that on the road. Uh, very interesting and useful. Uh, the other benefit of going with the uh, Z6 camera is that uh, all my old uh, batteries all still work for this camera. The only... Uh, uh, difference being that the capacity is slightly lower on the older uh, batteries and you cannot charge via USB to those. Um, but anyway, it's a good thing to uh, get the new C uh, versions of the batteries and be able to charge in the body on this. As well as when you use these in the older camera bodies, you'll get slightly more capacity, which was already fantastic on the old DSLRs anyway. Oh yeah, another cool thing that you get to do with these cameras is the extended shutter speeds. Uh, you can basically uh, program in shutter speeds much longer than the uh, old cameras. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's something I always wish that they had. Uh, all, most of the old cameras only go up to, I think, 30 seconds. Whereas uh, I believe this one goes to 900 seconds or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But uh, that's definitely very useful. Another cool thing for photographers is, uh, of course, the uh, ability to make your viewfinder black and white. Uh, that can be very helpful shooting in black and white. Um, you know, there are some people that have learned so well what happens to colors when you shoot in black and white. What colors look equal so you don't have problems with uh, contrast between the Im uh, objects in your image. Uh, but I'm not a rain man, and so the... Uh, you know, all the times that I shoot in black and white, I was always sort of guessing. And so this takes a lot of that guesswork out of it and makes it very cool and easy. Another nice feature for uh, still photography, which is also coming in some of the newest DSLRs, is the uh, automatic image stacking. Uh, 
so it does do focus uh, stacking at different uh, focus part intervals of your frame and that way it does it automatically and you can just uh, do the post-processing work to make an image stacked image uh, very helpful for you know landscape and uh, macro work and so that could be very cool it's not something I've messed around with with mine yet but uh, it sounds interesting to me and a lot of uh, macro photographers are you know swearing by that process at this point now a couple of the other current Nikons are doing uh, backside illuminated sensors, uh, however uh, it's mostly all the newer cameras so it limits your options if you wanted that. Uh, there is some benefit to it it seems like to me and um, so you know you got to pay a little extra to get a more current model if you want that uh, option. Now one cool feature that uh, I'm not sure if it works or not uh, is the diffraction compensation and uh, that just means that when you st stop down your aperture to a very narrow aperture uh, you know logistically and according to physics you start to lose sharpness after you know let's say f11 or f16 or something uh, and so it's supposed to help with that I don't know if it works or not but that could be a neat uh, thing to check out and see if it does anything uh, one of the coolest things about shooting with this camera so far that I really, really like is the live histogram option. And of course, uh, you know, for years I've been shooting optical viewfinders and I pretty much have a good idea in most shooting situations what I'm looking at. Uh, add in a light meter that adjusts as you use it and you can get a pretty good idea of what your camera is going to expose to and all that. However, the live histogram uh, on the screen is super awesome and very useful and uh, it just makes that whole process much easier and makes it easier to visualize. Um, so I think that there's going to be less times where you, let's say you pick up the camera and it's set up for a different shot and uh, your shot is going to turn out very badly if you take it. Uh, before you would not find out until after you took the photo often uh, you may just shoot it and then realize later uh, now with the live histogram you're going to realize basically as soon as you pick up the camera that's pretty cool now I want to go over a couple of cons that I wanted to talk about before I go into use case and why I chose it uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about uh, is that after having a D500 for many years like about five or six years since it came out uh, the buttons not lighting up on the back of the camera is really a kind of a bummer. Uh, I wish they would have put that on this camera. It's a great option on the D500 and D850 and a few other uh, DSLRs. Uh, so that's something I hope that they will do in the future on you know later releases of this camera. So another con that I wanted to mention for this camera, of course, is the battery life. Um, and pretty much uh, I do set mine to not review images uh, and unless I decide I want to go back and look at something. Uh, I'm using a live histogram anyway. And so generally uh, you can stretch out the battery life a good bit by doing that. Uh, however, of course, the battery life is still generally about half of what you would get in a DSLR. It just makes sense due to the EVF uh, running all the time, uh, whereas a DSLR doesn't have to do that. Okay, here's one thing that really kind of bugs me, uh, but it, you know, if you already have used a lens for a long time, it's not really a big deal. Uh, you do not get EXIF data with the uh, uh, AIS lenses, and that's really a bummer. Uh, for anyone that grew up in the film days, uh, and carried around a little notebook and wrote down what settings you set your shot to when you took a photo so that you could learn from the process. Uh, all that became so much easier with digital. You could do that after the fact in post-processing and it just made everything much easier. Um, now, for people still learning and things, uh, you, can't, you can't go back and figure out what you shot it at. And that's really kind of a bummer on these cameras, uh, even using Basically, any DSLR, uh, for the most part, uh, you could get that information when you used an AIS or AI lens. So that's really kind of a bummer. I did mention that you lose the automatic focusing when you use the D-series lenses. Uh, you still get everything else. Uh, and so, 
you know, that one's a little bit of a bummer, uh, but all both of these things are to be expected when you're adapting lenses anyway. So I don't think it's, you know, a deal breaker or anything like that. Okay, so one thing that I would consider to be a little bit of a bummer is the uh, 1XQD, 1SD card. Uh, I know everybody's super happy there's finally two cards, me included. Uh, however, um, as someone who has been using XQD for years, I find them to be, you know, faster and more reliable. I personally, even though they cost a little bit more, would rather use uh, two XQD cards and be able to back up video to both cards at the same time as well. Uh, and that would be a uh, you know huge benefit in my opinion versus having one of each. And um, you know, so hopefully in the future they will consider that. Uh, but I'm I'm not sure what's going to happen there. Some people are super happy to have an SD slot, not me. Now one more uh, con that I wanted to mention is that I am slightly disappointed. Nikon built this uh, Z mount uh, with the intention that it, it's larger, it can allow for better lens uh, uh, profiles, uh, make you, allow them to design better lenses. Uh, and you know, one thing that I've noticed is that pretty much the fastest lenses they really have, other than that knocked lens, is 1.8. And it doesn't make much sense to me. I think they ought to be offering, you know, 1.4 and 1.2 lenses, uh, much like Canon has done on their old mount for a long time. So I don't understand why Nikon's choosing to uh, basically charge double the price of all the F mount lenses, uh, despite you know, not making them any faster. Uh, however, the quality does seem pretty high. I just don't know if it constitutes, a, you know, doubling the price for the customer. Now, I did just hit on this, but uh, of course, with just the 1XQD and 1SD card, there is no redundancy for video files, and that's really unfortunate. Uh, uh, you know, I do, I am very appreciative that there are at least two card slots, but uh, the video could be also very important as well. I like that redundancy, and so hopefully in the future they'll find a way to, you know, get to that point. Uh, I imagine that's pretty technically complicated for the uh, engineers on these cameras to do that. Now one bummer is that exposure peaking is only available in video mode, it's not available for photo modes. Uh, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to mention is the, uh, you know, again, I'm happy that there is a vertical grip option that has proper buttons and everything like that. However, uh, I do not like the L-shaped uh, grip. And call me a little picky, but, you know, for someone that travels out of a backpack, that makes a big difference, uh, the amount of space that it takes up. Um, versus a, if you've ever had a regular, uh, just, you know, straight grip, it makes it much easier to put that in your bag. So it's very portable when you have it on the camera, but when you have it off, it's a little bit cumbersome. Uh, so that's something that I really don't like. Um, hopefully in a future iteration of this camera, they'll just put the contacts on the bottom like they've always done and that, that'll take care of that problem. Now one thing I wanted to talk about is that the mirrorless cameras are a little bit smaller than a, a, a full frame DSLR. Uh, they are also maybe a little smaller than some of the bigger crop sensor DSLRs like my D500 for example. Um, now uh, I do think that the size comparison is very much overblown. Uh, you don't automatically get a much smaller camera when you get a uh, um, mirrorless camera, especially if you're going to get a full frame camera. So keep that in mind and what you want to do is to always look at the full system that you're going to intend to use. Uh, make sure that the entire system ends up smaller. One thing is that some of these lenses for the uh, Z series are much smaller and then other lenses are not. Uh, so keep that in mind and compare you know, like for like, for example, when you're searching for a camera system. Now I did want to notice when buying these cameras that there are some uh, zoom lenses that have a very short focal range and to me that's not ideal if I'm going to have a very small lens like that. I would rather just be a prime lens 
uh, with a faster aperture and then, you know, carry a, you know, full capability zoom lens uh, in addition to that. Uh, so for, for me, I got the uh, 24 to 70 f4. Um, I just, I couldn't afford to get the uh, 2.8 version at this time. Uh, so for me, I'm just testing out the, the lenses for uh, the native lens uh, just to compare how they work versus the f lenses I already own. My initial uh, opinion is that the new lenses are very good uh, combined with the image stabilization. Uh, you know, I do very, I get very good results from this f4 uh, compared to some of the other lenses I've shot with and played with or owned in the past. Uh, so that's very good and uh, it's also very compact and I quite like that. Together, my 24 to 70 uh, f4 in the body it is probably 20 to 30 percent uh, smaller uh, than the D500 with an equivalent lens, for example. Of course, this is a full frame body, so it's not a direct comparison. Now, the, the one thing I wanted to mention is that the EVF is a little bit of a pro and a con at the same time. And what I mean by that is that, yes, you get the general exposure that you can expect looking through the lens, uh, although there are some auto, uh, you know, dimming and brightening and all that such uh, to make it a good experience when you're shooting, uh, that is a little bit of a variable. But with between that and the live histogram, it, it is very helpful. The, the, the con side of that is that um, you do have a little bit of blackout, which is fine if you're used to a, mirror, a digital DSLR. Uh, the mirror time uh, is pr pretty similar. Uh, the problem that I have is that the viewfinder, while very good, is still sort of cartoonish and things sort of have a cartoonish feel to it. It's something you could get used to. However, in certain cases, uh, I imagine that the optical viewfinder will still be superior for many shooters. So overall, in conclusion, I wanted to just mention a couple of things. Uh, me personally, I'm a long time uh, Nikon shooter. I have usually anywhere between 8 and 20 uh, Nikon F mount lenses uh, in my collection at any given time. So for someone like me, uh, having an option that allows for uh, fairly seamless uh, Nikon F mount uh, adapting, uh, is a really good option. Uh, so I think that a lot of people, even though the Z6 II doesn't necessarily stand out against a lot of the other cameras, uh, you know, for a new user, uh, for an existing F-mount uh, lens collector, uh, someone that has a lot of these lenses already, it, it's a very much a different story. Uh, so I am in that camp. Uh, I'm going to continue to use Nikon F-mount cameras. And so for me, uh, the Z6 II was a really good option. Now, one thing that did affect my decision is the fact that I'm coming to visit the U.S. in the times of COVID. This limits my options on the used market uh, and also uh, the types of cameras that I want are for this camera in particular are generally newer. Uh, now, I personally am going to add a uh, D810, so I will be using a uh, F-mount uh, DSLR. It's an older camera that you can get for a lot cheaper than buying, like, so let's say, a new D850, for example. Uh, so I will, you know, use it for another year or two, and then in a couple years, I'll probably upgrade that to D850. Uh, so for me, uh, I'm using this as a... Uh, you know, does most of everything I want it to do kind of camera. Uh, I can take it on motorcycle trips, which if any of you have watched my videos, I like to do that. Uh, so it'll be more portable for that as well. Uh, but this camera can basically do video as well as stills. And then I'll add a, you know, ultra high resolution uh, full frame uh, camera for a DSLR. My thing is, is that if I'm gonna carry a full-size camera that's very large and everything, I wanna go ahead and get a high-resolution, you know, full-frame camera. Uh, the D D500 was great, but I'm gonna get rid of the D500 as well as all my crop sensor lenses. And 
basically that's where I'm going to go. If I ever want something much smaller, I will consider a uh, micro four thirds or crop sensor camera as long as it's significantly smaller than my Z6 II. I was going to mention that I would have considered a Z7 II uh, and uh, I, you know, that's much in line with the price of a D850, for example. However, uh, I, if I would have want, went that route, I wouldn't have had the uh, money to also buy a uh, native lens to go with it. And that's something I very much wanted to do to be able to try out the system properly, consider whether or not I'm going to buy more Z lenses in the future. Now, I haven't spent a lot of time with the camera yet. I, my initial impression is that I very much like it. Uh, it's performing quite well. Uh, I like the autofocus and the EVF and lots of different things that it offers. Uh, I love the live histogram. Uh, so I'm not going to do a full review here. This is my you know, overall impression and why I chose to buy the camera. Uh, maybe in a couple months, I'll come back and do a proper review of some sort. There's lots of those online. I just thought that maybe my thought process would help a few of you out there to decide whether or not this is something that you wanted to consider for yourself. So anyway, guys, I hope this video will help you out. Uh, I'm sure there's some things I missed. If there's any questions that you have, feel free to uh, hit me up in the comments with those and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, until the next one, take care.